So real quickly, a nice short video for you to understand why I'm right. Isaiah uh, 42 is very key. Isaiah 42, 1. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. Now what, what, the, it, what is meant by this is he's not going to act like a, a coward. Okay, that's what he's getting at. Not that the person won't literally shout. Okay, because actions speak louder than words. It goes back to Psalm 19. I can't stress that enough that your actions are the praise that God is looking for. Not so much your, your, your words. That's why Jesus quotes Isaiah when he says these people um, pay me mere lip service and their hearts are far from me. Three, a bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged until he establishes justice on earth. So somebody who is going to establish true justice, not Western supremacy or Eastern supremacy or token minority supremacy, but true justice, not social club, theater arts and propaganda, not good cop, bad cop psychology, true justice. Okay, you have to really think about what that means and be honest with yourselves. I think most of you know, if not damn near all of you, because in order for you to play your left, right paradigm game, left, right, middle, what have you, you have to understand what is right and what the, is expected and the boundaries and marks of the beast that the political groups of these nations of this world, these wicked boundaries, you know, you have to understand who is setting the boundaries to some degree and why and what they expect of you. Obviously, I don't approve of you doing those things. You should tell the truth. So let's read it again real quickly. And keep in mind, romantic justice and the reed can stand for prophets and the wick can stand for people, right? They bring up Ephraim and the people of Aram uh, as wicks, smoldering wicks that God is going to snuff out. But the point of someone like me is I'm not here, and this is a model for the idea of someone who's a servant. I'm the last possible servant, the last king of kings ever. I'm not here to um, destroy people, but by them ignoring my words, they are going to be thrown into the fire after they die and their offspring are going to be cut off from God. That's why this is so extremely important. I get mad about it. I apologize if you think it's unfair, but I get mad about it. I'm fumed, I'm provoked, I'm poisoned, covertly drugged, okay? Because it's so serious. People are going to cut off their own offspring, okay? The lying lips detest those who uh, they hurt. I think it's Proverbs 26. Lying lips detest those who they hurt. And a flattering mouth works ruin. Okay, better is open rebuke than love that is concealed. Isaiah 42, 1. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not falter or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. So God upheld my top martial arts challenge and also the logical justice that means that I'm Christ, right? I bring up that the harp is a sickle-shaped a sickle -shaped sword, okay? It's not just a musical instrument. So the true music of God is the martial arts actions more than the person playing the harp, but the harp can be effective as well, okay? The music can be effective as well. But we see a bunch of Satanists and Luciferians these days that are doing the music. Uh, three, a bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Okay, so a bruised prophet, he will not break, and a smoldering uh, person, uh, you know, who's in rebellion, he will not uh, snuff out completely. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice, but the spirit of justice will, if that is justice. Four, he will not falter or be discouraged until he establishes justice on earth. So you see my consistent attempts to establish justice on earth while I'm fumed and poisoned and provoked. You see, since 2009, when I started making videos, they consistently fume me and provoke me. And it caused me to make minor mistakes, okay? In a state of being fumed and poisoned and shunned by women, heartbroken, scrambling to try to get people to realize that I'm the one they should listen to. I knew on some level that I was the son of God and that I'm the top martial arts ever. In 2012, 2013, it became more apparent. By 2014, I had no doubt in my mind that I was the top and I am the top martial artist ever. And I'm being persecuted, like I've been saying, since 2013. Look at my 2013 Top Martial Arts Challenge uh, on my other channel. The, it's called MEC, second word, LOC. 
okay? Because I was trying to reach out to the street gangs, trying to get them to unite, okay? Scripture and the word crip root, okay? The root they go and the root of this idea, right? Before the Black Panthers was the martial art order. Then at some point, the Black Panthers emerged. Then they, they get destroyed. Then the, old, the Crips of old who were kind of street urban revolutionaries, you know, community revolution in progress. And then the modern kind of criminal Crips emerge and they start shooting and selling drug guns in the 80s and so on and so forth. So it is the scripture, right? It's the root for this. And also Crip means crippled because they want to cripple people. And they've been crippling me. I have to wear these funny glasses because they mess up my eyes. And I have now three videos on this channel alone or four showing definitively that they're brighting me to mess up my eyesight. So it's not justice for people to leverage ill-gotten gains. Proverbs 119, such are the paths of those who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life, the spiritual life of all who pursue them. And if you are the walking dead, when you meet your maker, you think you're going to be lifted to the heavens? No, like Capernaum, like Sodom and Gomorrah, you will go down to Hades. Okay, in the second clip, um, this is from the book Fighting for Honor, page 217. And the reason why I cite this is it helps you understand. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor God, thy father. Okay, and people say Abraham the father. is another way to look at it. But it's really the spirit of God in Abraham and the spirit of God in Jerusalem in the heavens. Right, Galatians 4 that you're supposed to honor. So what does it mean fighting for honor? Where are they right? Where are they wrong? Where's the Bible right in explaining the way they did? Where are they wrong? Right, because it's confusing people to some degree. So obviously their explanation isn't optimum for bringing everyone to heaven and it did not accomplish that fighting for honor page 217 even the less fortunate who were killed in their attempts to defend their honor died fighting as proud women and men both they and the most successful claimed their bodies as their own talking about the transatlantic slave trade and african martial art traditions so these guys who died fighting with scripture these guys who died fighting literally with razor blades and, and, and martial arts, capoeira and evil martial arts, okay? They died fighting as proud men and women, proud with true pride, pride in principle, in honor as a high moral standard, okay? Both they and the more successful claim their bodies as their own, right? People are slaves to what has mastered them. Has God mastered you? or the sinful ideas of this world. Those who resisted the dishonor of whippings disarmed their oppressors of the central means of physical discipline. Their resistance ideologically rejected their status as mere chattel objects and proclaimed their authority over their own bodies and their will above that of their enslavers. God's will is above the world's will. So when they live for principle, even though they were struck down, John the Baptist, Stephen the Martyr, Jesus. So this is the model for the whole world. This may as well be in the Bible. The Jews who died fighting, you know, the battles against the Philistines and the Jebusites and so on and so forth. Okay. In the story. So as the gospels preached around the world and people are like, oh, that's, I, they don't care. And they continue to. You know, they, 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 oh, we don't care. And they continue to breed in this world and continue despite Luke 23 and Paul's warnings. Okay, you see how it is justice for your offspring to be cut off because they come from a long line of people that refuse to be morally precise. They follow the church's bullshit propaganda and they refuse to fight for God, be it with scripture or scripture and and, and the, the sword, the, you, know, you know, literally fighting. Okay. Or the principles that the Bible is trying to explain by itself and getting themselves killed. Or the principle the Bible is trying to explain in its true form and fighting to the death, literally. So those of you who remained are not right with God. I am the last redeemer possible. So even if they never heard of me on the, on the other side of the world, why? Why did the animals and nature, the life forms of nature that came close to as evolved as the humans uh, they evolved from the life forms, why didn't they evolve to be humans? Because coming close is not enough. Saying, well, we were that, it's not enough. You have to do God's will. Due to tech, breeding, generational ill-gotten gains, cheating and rebellion, it's crystal clear. And again, present your viable counter Morgan Hill, San Jose, the world. Present them in the comments. If you cannot reach me on this channel, find me at the location that you would expect to find me. 
I'm not supposed to tell you exactly where it is because of the rules on this channel, okay? But I'm not hard to find in Morgan Hill in general in the morning. 